Kiki P writes, I bought so much of the new Snap Collection by Simple Stories, and I'm not a project lifer. I just scrap regular 12 by 12 pages. Is there a way to use these papers on my layouts without covering up all the good stuff? Glitter Girl, can you help Kiki P scrapbook something snappy? Of course I can. Let's take a quick look at Snap in case you haven't seen it before. It's a relatively new range from Simple Stories and it comes with a few different things that you can pick and choose what you would like. One of my top recommendations is this pack. These all come together as one set of mini letter stickers and I think do I have all of the colors here? I think I'm missing one here as well. There's a brown involved. Um, so you get several different uh, sheets and they all have alphabet tiles. The alphabets include both upper and lower case all in the same font, numbers, um, a couple uh, ampersands and ampersats, and then a selection of different little phrase stickers at the bottom of each one. And you can tell that um, they're certainly usable because I've used quite a few of the phrase stickers already. So um, all of the colors represented in the collection are included in that one pack of letter stickers and you can use them one color at a time or mix them up so as a pack you'll get quite a lot of use out of um, that set. So that's my top pick for the collection but um, of course you want to see some of the other things. Here's the 12 by 12 sticker sheet which includes all sorts of little pieces that you can um, pull apart including little pieces that look like like washi tape so um, they're thick like a sticker and you don't have to worry about getting the tears perfect or anything like that because it's already there in the set so you wouldn't need a whole roll but you can still have that look and um, plus lots of little arrows photo strip labels and um, some uh, different die cut edges tabs all sorts of nice really usable things on the sticker sheet and then as with many Simple Stories collections, you get all these different cut apart pieces and they can be used in divided page protectors or they can be put directly into your design on a 12 by 12 page. So there are designs with borders and different patterns on each side so you can pick which one you like. And this is my favorite sheet so you can see I've already cut into that one but this one has all different Polaroids um, that you can cut apart or it has this multicolored chevron on the back with all the colors from the collection again. And they're all different sizes so things that would go in a 6x8 book, things that would go in a little 4x4 four four pocket um, but you can use any of these sizes on a 12x12 12 12 page so not to worry even if divided page protectors are not your style if you like the graphic look of this collection and you like the colors it's definitely something you can use on standard 12 by 12 pages too this one is a little different um, for for simple stories because instead of having the boxes this one you could use as a full sheet like this or you could cut apart every single little piece just pick the ones that you want and then use the polka dot for the rest lots of little captions and some other cut apart pieces you've got calendars which has a great a turquoise grid on the back and stripes and polka dots there with the full collection of colors and then some bingo cards with a barcode style stripe on the back. So all those pieces that I've shown you so far are from um, this collection called Snap Life. So the Snap collection is everything that looks like um, these colors and, and the whole wider collection. All those different pieces that um, you can cut apart are part of the Snap Life series. Then there's this section which is called Snap Color Vibe and these are basic papers. They go through the same colors that were represented in the earlier papers but in two basic pattern sheets. So you got this one which is large polka dots on one side and a diagonal stripe on the other and then the second option small polka dots and a chevron. So you can pick and choose which colors you would use the most, uh, which patterns that you tend to re return to time and time again. Diagonal stripes are great as backgrounds because they give some movement to the design and you can put lots and things, lots of different types of um, designs on top and not have a, um, a static page. It will have a nice a nice feel to the end design. So you get all of these different um, color options. So you've got the turquoise, the red, green, pink, gray, yellow, orange, and brown. Um, I don't have every single color here. I don't have the yellow left over. And then this one is not from um, 
from Simple Stories, but I just wanted to point it out that these are a good match. And these are the Sophisticates uh, letter sticker sets from Bella Boulevard, and they come in a range of colors. I only ordered the pink. Um, but you get all those different styles on one sheet, and it's always a really good um, number of, of letters. I find that with the Bella Boulevard sheets, I can spell a lot of things before I run out of stickers. So that's a good match if you're looking for um, another lettering option to put in the mix with your snap papers. Then I wanted to show you one other option because it's very similar even though it's from another company and that's this new Photo Freedom line from Echo Park and this is um, a Photo Freedom from Echo Park it is a format. It's basically um, this idea of what you can do with page, with divided page protectors and and quick scrapbooking by having things in these sorts of boxes that you cut apart. So that's very much in line with Simple Stories. And there are um, a few different options. I have two of them here, but there's uh, already a couple others, at least one other, in the store. This one, this collection is by um, Alison Kreft, who did Everyday Eclectic, and before that was with Hambly Screen Prints. And uh, this is called Today's Story. So this is a, a color scheme that you might guess that I would like straight away because it has lots of pink and turquoise and you get all sorts of different patterns designed to go easily into four by six pockets but then also some smaller boxes and some of the backs of the papers are solid prints or, or repeated prints for the whole 12 by 12 so anything when you don't like a box or it doesn't speak to you you can always turn it over and use the coordinating pattern on the other side and then 6 by 12 boxes, this great black and white map pattern, some borders and smaller boxes, and then a sticker sheet with alphabets and lots of tabs, months of the year, and all those sorts of things to coordinate. So this is a very similar collection and um, in how you would use it on a 12 by 12 page because it's the same thing as Snap where you're going to be cutting different elements apart. And just to show you one of the others, they also have a very cute Christmas line at the moment called Dear Santa. So it has owls and Santa caps and cute little triangle Christmas trees and some very nice typography. Lots of lovely little tricks with the wording. And just show you the backs of these very quickly. So if you're looking to do some sort of Christmas project, a Christmas journal, a December daily, but you want to keep it in your regular 12 by 12 album, this would be a great way to do that because you could just grab a couple divided page protectors and you could still use that same concept without having it be in a separate album. It could be right in there with the rest of your pages from throughout the year. Um, I'm not going to use this one today, but I just wanted you to see that there was an option other than pink and turquoise. And so I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to work with mostly snap and a little bit of today's story for our project today. I'm starting with the turquoise diagonal stripe for the background and then I've cut some of that black and white map paper from the Echo Park collection. And basically I wanted a big piece of this map paper but there were some elements on the cut apart on the other side that I wanted to use. So instead of starting with a measurement for this box, I just cut away the pieces that I knew I wanted to use somewhere and then this was what I was left with. So that ends up um, a nice size to go in the middle. So go ahead and adhere this and then before I add the photos want to add just a little bit of ink to um, to flow across the page. So I've got some of the Heidi Swap um, Color Shine in tinsel this time. And I can just let that dry. Um, it's a nice pewtery silver color. I think at the time this goes um, live, it, that color is sold out at the moment. But you can click that notify me button and um, it will be back in stock, I'm pretty sure. So you can keep your eye out for it. But it's a good silvery color. For pages that have both sides printed with the same size of boxes rather than one that has boxes on one side and a full page print on the other, you can go ahead and cut them all to their size to start off so that you um, 
don't have to to fumble through the larger sheets or if it's easier for you to keep lots of four by six pieces together just depending on what your process is and um, but don't feel that you have to use a whole four by six card at once I certainly could use a whole card here I could tuck this underneath the photo but the truth is I really just want part of this card so sometimes I look at the designs and I look for just smaller pieces of the design that will be useful so in this particular case I just want um, part of of the larger block and I can save the other text for later so just cut that apart so that I have the elements that I want to include and the rest might end up on this page or they might end up saved for another project on another day but it was this bit that I wanted to include and I may need to move my photo a bit or work on the movement uh, or work on the placement of the page and move things around a little bit. But this is kind of my process if I want to use these sorts of elements on a 12 by 12 page is that I start looking for the smaller pieces that I might want to include and I cut them apart without adhering things just yet so that I can see what I have um, on hand. Like this was one of the strips I saved from the back of that map paper because I wanted to come in here and cut out the five, six, seven, eight to include on the page. So I'm gathering smaller pieces that I can include. And sometimes it's worth remembering which different um, elements are on which piece. So for example, I know that there's another one of these cameras. So if I wanted this, but I wanted to keep this whole piece for later, that's okay because I know that that camera is elsewhere in the design. I don't need to cut into this one to get a Polaroid because I have a whole sheet of Polaroids, things like that. And so I try to have a look and see what's going to be the, um, the best for that page and then cut those pieces apart so that I can have most of them, if not all of them, that I want to use out on the desk ready to so go. Once I've picked everything that I think I might want to include, I go ahead and ink the edges, trim these all to um, the right size, and then with stickers I cut them out of the sheet so that the backing is still there. And sometimes it means cutting a sticker in half. So this one said live life in full color but had the American spelling of color which I wouldn't use in my album. So I just wanted to have the top part and then I can mix it with some letter stickers or other lettering to spell out color and um, with you instead of with that. So this way I have all these pieces ready to go and I can just move them around the page until I'm happy with where they are. So what I'm thinking is I did add a little bit more um, to this photo mat to make the photos a bit heavy, um, heavier in weight on the page since I'm going to add so many little pieces of embellishment. And I thought I could work this embellishment group off the side here using this ombre journaling block in pink and the multicolored polka dot Polaroid, which was why I pulled in the multicolored polka dot up here as well. So I'll start there and then I can start adding the smaller pieces. Yeah, I want that behind the turquoise. And to give kind of outer corners a little bit of a lift, you can curl them and then add just a little pop dot to keep anything from going too flat. Then I have these larger pieces to work with and I want to scatter these around so that they're not all in one big grouping. I want them kind of spread out but obviously some things will need to go in groups. So this one um, where it was a, a little bit awkward and heavy up here in the corner can work here because if I do overlap it with the photo ever so slightly there and this is dead space in the picture so you're not losing any content of the the photo by covering up that little bit or it might actually tuck under the pictures or under the photo mat and still fit actually that's quite a good fit so I think I'll go ahead and go with that placement before I change my mind. So this is why I like to have them all cut out because then once I do find a place where something will work, I can commit really quickly and that makes it a little bit easier process or a faster process at least to keep scrubbing. So I think um, this one can come down here 
I do need to make sure I leave some space for journaling. So I'm thinking I can write in this gap at the bottom and then have a little grouping of embellishment up here. It's going to need some pink up here, I think, because the pink is so prominent in this part of the page. So I can go back to my pink polka dot and cut a little bit of a shape that would work in both this spot and this spot. Instead of using just a strip of paper, I wanted to make these slightly offset rings. So it's um, a ring of paper, so you use two, two circle cutters in different sizes, um, but it's not perfectly centered, so you have it purposely off to one side so that you get um, a narrower part of the circle and a wider part of the circle. So to do that, I'm using two sizes of circle punch. You can also do this with nested dies, that's really easy, but if you have circle punches um, to hand and uh, or if this is the only option you have, then here's a little trick for doing it. So I cut the larger circle first, and then I have the circle that I want. I'm going to be removing the middle so it doesn't matter what I do there. And I put a little bit of adhesive in the very center of the circle. Then when I put it into the punch, I can hold on to it with my finger, move it around until I get it um, in a good spot. And then I can get rid of that extra piece in the center, which leaves me with this circle. I, I think of it kind of as an earring shape where you have the smaller piece at the top and a wider piece at the bottom. And then that's something that you can use with your design to create little pockets so the piece can loop in. So you can tuck um, the different layers into those corners and just get this kind of flash of the color and, and the pattern. And it's just a little twist on instead of just a plain circle or a plain strip. Just something slightly different to try. I have three of those little loop designs on my page. So two with the little text boxes and then one over here with this area that's going to become the title uh, with a sticker from the snap sheet tucked underneath there. So just staying consistent to the idea of the loop plus something tucked under heading in the same direction. I'm going to go ahead and get my writing down on the page and figure out how I want to um, finish the title so that it all makes a bit of sense. And then once the writing's in place, I'll come back and add a little bit of final embellishment on top. I had plenty of room to include my writing here at the bottom and I do have this space I want to work with in the title block. So there's kind of this gap between the larger letters here and the sticker and there's just kind of this awkward trapped space in the middle. So there I'm going to use these uh, snap letter stickers and space them out to fit that space. Now I'm ready for my finishing touches. So I'm looking for gaps that need a little bit of something and there's a big gap right here that would be a good spot for some embellishment. So I had a look at things that were um, round to kind of go in line with the, the three circular embellishments and had the tin pin from the 9 to 5 collection which has a little clock on it um, which seemed to go in line with the idea of when the show starts. So just matted that with a tiny little um, punched circle behind in the turquoise. I also had this little tab sticker that I pulled out from before so I'm going to include that along the side with some letter stickers so I can tuck this just underneath that edge and pop up that one corner and then take my letter stickers and this time do them in lowercase to spell out the rest of the phrase. That same letter sticker sheet has those little phrases at the bottom. So I'm going to pick three of those to mix in with the embellishment areas that I've added. And just, nothing fancy, I'm just inking the edges and then sticking them down just so that there's another element that's repeated three times on the page one down here to draw attention to the journaling and then one to finish this block here and 
And then I'm going to come back with some little dots as my last little finishing thing. So these are enamel dots from my mind's eye and they do them in different colors to match different collections. And I didn't have any in turquoise so I'm going to go with the pink. Um, or I could go with the gray actually because I did add the silver here. So I think I'll go with gray. And just come around to the different spots of embellishment and add little triangles of dots here and there. Mix them in with the little paint splatter dots as well. Here's my finished page and your challenge for this week is to use products that are designed for divided page protectors but put them on a 12 by 12 page. So it could be Simple Stories, it could be Snap or one of their other collections, it might be the new Echo Park Photo Freedom, it could be any paper like that that's designed to be cut apart and used in pockets but we're going to work with it on the full size page, whatever page size you want to use. So give those um, ideas a try and look at the different different cut apart papers in ways as you can see them as embellishments and um, that cost a lot less than a packet of embellishments perhaps because you can cut all those papers into different pieces and layer them up to create a page design that you like. I really hope you'll give it a try and I look forward to see your pages in the gallery. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.